Hello, it's Kit Alowitz with another video segment from the Leadership Journey. This one in particular is for the summit. So thank you for coming. I've got three videos that I'd like to share with you. These are three individuals that have recently participated in the LEAD program and are now active participants and actually here today participating in the summit. Now, I've been fascinated with these folks that have been willing outside of the sales center to participate in our leadership journey. These three folks, I've got two from the rep firm and one from our production center. So the first person you'll hear is Phil Miller. He's the president and CEO of Miller Mechanical. You've got Troy Boardman, who's the sales manager for GE Booth up in the northern part of the world, up in Chicago land. And then you've also got Meredith Mangan, who is the head of HR for the uh, Flow Center and the Production Center. So I'm particularly excited for all three of these videos, and these are three active people in the program. So take it away, Phil, Troy, and Meredith. See you next time. Hey folks. So I was asked to answer the question, why should attending the LEAD program and now living the principles give us the courage to have important conversations with employees about performance? So first, I want to say that this is not just about managers talking to their direct reports, right? This is all of us having difficult conversations with each other, right? And we all shy away from that, right? None of us relish conflict. And I think we, a big reason we struggle with it is because we have this fear of the present, right? And management is a, hey, we need to do or you need to do this by then type of function, whereas actually change changes the leadership function right uh, and that's that's the huge focus of the lead program and the post-industrial leadership right so how do we help a teammate improve first I would say that we need to start by involving that person, right? We need to explain to them what the goal is and what the implications are of meeting or not meeting that goal as it pertains to their performance, right? And don't just talk about implications in terms of first level effects. Think about secondary effects, right? So if you do this job well or you do this project well, what does that mean for them? What does that mean for their ability to achieve their goals? And critically in that process, you need to understand what are their personal and professional goals so that you can make sure that you are meeting their needs to make sure that their behaviors are aligned and driving in the right direction. Second, do not expect that this is just going to be one conversation. You need to leave room for the internalization process and make sure that you give that person space after the initial conversation to go through that process and really marinate in the ideas or input that you've provided. Also, it's really important that we recognize that one of the first steps in that process is that internal friction that happens when you're holding two opposing thoughts in your head at the same time. So there's going to be tension, there's going to be frustration, and you need to verbalize, you need to validate what that person is feeling and make sure that they know that it's okay to be frustrated, that that is the result that you would expect from the conversation, right? And just make sure that you're creating that kind of open supportive dialogue. Third is feedback. In the first two steps, you've really just laid the groundwork for an ongoing dialogue. And if you are not seeing the improvements that you're looking for with your initial conversations, make sure that you're having an ongoing discussion about beliefs and values and personal needs. Because if you're seeing behaviors that you're not expecting or that don't align with good performance, that that may be the source of the issue. All right, fourth step. Again, recognize this isn't just about managers having conversations with underperforming employees. It's also teammate to teammate. But if you are in the case where you're managing an underperforming employee and things, despite conversations ongoing over weeks or months or whatever the situation is, if you're not seeing the improvement that you need, that you would expect, then you need to have the conversation about whether or not they're a right fit. I think all of us have been at a point where we are not a great fit for the job that we're in and we know it, right? So don't think about the conversation as a criticism of them. 
sometimes people feel a great relief from acknowledging and having dialogue about the lack of fit and the next steps to move beyond that and get into a job that is a better fit in which they will succeed and feel truly appreciated. All right, that's a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour of my neighborhood while I get my steps in for the day. Hopefully that was somewhat insightful or uh, there were some valuable uh, ideas or input in there for you. I do want to recognize all of that is just from where I am on my point in my journey. And I certainly would appreciate your feedback or your insights on the topic. Okay, well, I'm gonna go enjoy this beautiful fall day, uh, get myself a pumpkin spice latte, maybe head out to the apple orchard, put on some kind of cable knit sweater thing, maybe take a couple of Instagram stories, climb in an apple tree, maybe an apple in the mouth, maybe an apple on the head. Who knows, we'll see. Hi everyone, my name is Troy Boardman with the George E. Booth Company. Uh, just finished the lead workshop. Kid had asked me to put a brief video together uh, with regards to what I'm doing differently and starting to think about differently. So for me, uh, mindful journaling was, was number one, uh, both professionally and personally. Uh, for me, I get so wrapped up in, in going 100 miles an hour um, that it, it's been good for me to, to take some time critically thinking, um, just quietly, alone, uh, about different things. So that's been good for me. Uh, another thing is you know working through people instead of to people and uh, the idea of you know collaboration cooperation uh, some of the other things that we touched on in in the program and you know how we can better implement that uh, on a daily basis um, you know in the office and the last piece is is ipo and understanding you know inputs uh, our processes and to derive you know uh, an expected output so those are some of the things that I've started to think about uh, and do differently, and hopefully we can start implementing some of those and see some real change um, here in the future. But uh, overall, lead, lead workshop program for me uh, was very beneficial, uh, certainly made me think differently, and uh, hopefully uh, begin to, to put those steps together to do things differently in the long run. So thank you. Hi. My name is Meredith Mankin, and I've worked for Andresen Hauser for about 18 years. I am grateful to be part of an organization that is always striving to be better. And this LEAD program is one example uh, of the things that we are trying to do to continue to grow and continue to improve. One of my biggest takeaways from the LEAD program so far has been the importance and the value of ongoing reflection. Uh, usually, uh, I approach some of the trainings and workshops and I'm thinking how do I apply that at flow? How do I tailor that for our leaders? How do we use that uh, in, the, in the PC? And in the lead program I really uh, got a chance to think a little bit differently about that uh, and that I'm reflecting on what I'm doing and how that uh, is, is consistent with or inconsistent with uh, the principles. One of the questions uh, that sometimes has been asked is, how do the lead principles pertain to you at the production center? And I do think that uh, the lead principles pertain to the production center. One of the great things about the principles is that they are universal. Uh, so not only do they apply to the sales center, they certainly apply to the production centers, to other companies, any companies, uh, any leader, and, and any human really. Uh, many of us have been through a wide variety of leadership or development uh, programs or trainings, workshops, and there's always a good takeaway uh, that can, can be found out of those, many times multiple takeaways. Uh, but I think that there's, there might be new or different terminology in the way that the LEAD program uh, presents the information, uh, but if you think about the other uh, concepts and the other themes, uh, they are definitely more similar than different. Uh, for example, two versus through. This principle, uh, when we internalize, integrate, institutionalize, uh, another way we could call that is engagement and involvement of employees. And good communication and including others in decision making and change management, it's not easy. It's definitely not efficient, but it is definitely more effective. The lead principles, those concepts, uh, they also help us work better together. Maybe some of you have heard PC versus SC sometime in your uh, experience here at Edrison Hauser. Uh, I've heard it also globally that that becomes a little bit of a dynamic and 
And if we think about our top goals, maybe here we have different top managers, different leaders, uh, even the companies that we report to in Europe are different. Uh, so we could focus on that and focus on what differences they're asking us for. But in the end, our top goals, what we want to do around business growth, what we want to do with uh, how we want to develop employees uh, and develop our talent pipeline, how we want to have a great culture for our, for our company. Those are very similar goals. Uh, so we do have uh, some opportunities there as well that we could improve the relationship, the confidence, the trust between the sales centers and the production centers. We have so many uh, activities and initiatives that bring us closer together because we are more similar than different. want to even go further than that, we could uh, take a look at through the lens of the IPO uh, principle. When we consider inputs and outputs and the processes in between our uh, different inputs and, and what, what internal customers we have, we tend to maybe look at our process or in our four walls. And if we take a look at the whole system, that's really how we can, can make the most improvements, becoming aware of the experience of others and how what we are doing is helping or hindering the process and success of others. Uh, taking a look at that whole system gives us an opportunity to improve the whole system.